Good morning, guys, and welcome to Dynamics course. In this lecture, we're going to do some funny introduction about dynamics. Hope you will enjoy it. See this ball? This is a basketball resting on the floor. Do you think, guys, that this basketball is in statics or dynamics? In fact, guys, since the net force exerted on this basketball is equal to zero, then this ball will stay at rest, and then this is the case of statics. What if a basketball player wants to throw this ball and get this team win? So let's see what did Fadi Al Khatib do with this basketball. يتغير بهالوقت تبريرة وصل لا 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 باباون باباون سعيل 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 باباون فاد الخطيب. Nice shot. So guys, basically, this basketball player took this ball from the rest and threw it. Do you think that this ball stays in statics? Not anymore, because in fact, guys, in this case, when throwing this basketball, the net force is no longer zero. I have the gravity, but I also have two other forces from the player, and this will cause a net force that is equal to the mass of the ball times its accelerate acceleration. And this net force will cause the acceleration motion of this ball. So this is in fact, guys, the difference between statics and dynamics. In statics, guys, I'm gonna deal with Newton's first law that states that any object will stay at rest or at constant velocity unless acted on by an outside force. And this first law of motion describes an object with no net force. This is the case of statics. However, guys, if this object is affected by a net force, like the case of basketball, then this net force will cause the acceleration of this ball or this object in the direction of the force. And this is the case of dynamics. So guys, dynamics is based on Newton's second law of motion that describes an object affected by a net force. So in order to decide whether I am in statics or in dynamics, I should find the net force. If the net force is equal to zero, then I am in statics. So if this object is at rest, it will stay at rest. Or this object is at constant velocity, it will stay at the same constant velocity. But if the net force is not equal to zero, that this means that I am now in dynamics. And in this case, the acceleration of the motion is affected by this net force. In fact, this net force will be equal to m times a, and they are all in vector form. And this means, guys, that this acceleration will have the same direction of the net force and the value of this acceleration will be equal to this force over the mass of this object. So what is dynamics? Dynamics, in fact, is divided into two parts, kinematics and kinetics. Although we're gonna start by studying kinematics before kinetics, However, kinetics is the main cause behind kinematics. 
kinetics is in fact the cause and kinematics is the effect of this kinetics. So guys, in fact, kinematics, which is the effect or the result of kinetics, will deal with displacement, with velocity, and with acceleration, because they are all the effects of kinetics. What is kinetics now? Kinetics is the cause that affects the motion of this particle or of this body. Therefore, kinetics should be one of these force, impulse, momentum, or energy. Guys, don't be overwhelmed because, in fact, kinematics deals only with two main equations. All other equations will be derived from these two basic equations. What are these equations? They are clear and obvious. The velocity is in fact the derivative of displacement and the acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. If you memorize these two basic equations, you can find all other equations. These two equations will come up with a lot of rules in different applications. And we're gonna see how. So fact, guys, the course content of this dynamics course will focus on kinematic at the first place, then kinetics, which is the cause behind kinematics. And I'm going to start first by kinematics and kinetics of a particle in rectilinear motion, curvilinear motion, projectile, other applications. And then I'm going to do the same, but for a rigid body. Hold on. But what is the difference between particle and rigid body. In fact, guys, I can assume that this body is a particle. If I can assume that it is small enough in size and so that all the forces exerted on this body are concentrated on its center of gravity, like this first figure of this red car. But this is not the case of a rigid body, which means, guys, that in rigid body, all the forces could not be assumed at the center of gravity. Now, this body is big enough, so I cannot consider it small in size. I cannot consider it as one point, one center of gravity, and all the forces are exerted on it. In the rigid body, the forces are not exerted or they are not all exerted on the center of gravity. I can have some of them on the center of gravity, but others like the second figure of the stretch car are not exerted on the center of gravity anymore. And this will cause what is called moment. Remember chapter four of statics? This will cause a moment. And this moment, guys, is the ability of doing a rotation. If all the forces are exerted at the center of gravity, which is the case of particle, then the moment will be, of course, zero. And there will be no rotation about the center of gravity. While in the rigid body, the moment is not necessarily zero. And I can have a rotation about the center of gravity. So guys, this is the difference between particle and rigid body. Hey guys, if you take this car, in some cases, I can assume it as a particle. I can assume it's small enough compared to other bodies so that I can say that this is a particle. In some cases, the same car will be a rigid body. So guys, are you excited to start with this dynamics course?
If yes, you can go and check Hebler textbook because each course content has a relevant chapter stated here in this table in the textbook of Hebler. That's it for today. See you next week, next lecture. Thank you.